we now talk about distributed denial of service, it is another trend of attacking your PC. Now, your PC is connected to the internet, but then it cannot access the internet because the link between the PC to the internet is being clogged by hundreds of other infected hosts on the internet and they will be flooding it with traffic so that you are being a switched resource, right? The, 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 your PC actually gets very less uh, time to connect and download data. Now, this type of flooding the network with spurious packets or useless packets is called a denial of service. And this, since this is happening from host distributed across the internet, this is also called a distributed denial of service. DDoS has become a very increasingly uh, big nuisance. And uh, so what happens is actually a PC has a malware installed in it and that malware can start as a bot. As I told you, a bot is something that uh, is, a, is a software that can run automated scripts on the network. So <clears throat> then actually PC you now becomes part of this botnet once it has this malware, and this malware gets installed without the uh, user's knowledge because uh, through a spyware or through a malware. And this starts flooding the network with traffic, and essentially it creates an availability issue for the uh, system. So some of the early DDoS attack was the Zoto bomb worm which came in 2005 and actually it achieved worldwide notoriety in August of that year and leading media organizations including ABC, Financial Times, New York Times actually fell prey to it. So this was one early uh, uh, distributed denial of service attack. So we now saw that there is a PC is very much responsible. A PC, if it becomes a malware, if it has a malware which can spawn a bot, the PC itself is not just compromised, but the entire network can get compromised. The entire network can become unavailable. The en entire network uh, can suffer from this availability issue because one PC there or a bunch of PCs are, are, have become vulnerable, or have become infected. So, and we have been repeatedly telling in the module one that people have to protect themselves, people need to be protected. And what, what do we mean by a person being protected? The system that he is working on should be protected. So, now how do you protect your PC? So, there are a lot of things that come here. For example, antivirus software, anti-spyware software, windows and applications updates, security bundles, personal firewalls, wireless security, other best practices. Now, we are in this sort of uh, a very bad state. We actually buy software, then we actually buy software to secure that software. It's sort of very disturbing state. And why this has happened? Because over a period of time, when PC was, in, uh, was uh, invented, people never thought that this PC is going to be part of a million PCs uh, uh, internet. People never thought that a PC can be shared. If then they would have called it as a SC or shared computer rather than a personal computer. When the PCs came into existence and operating systems were written, they never had a clue that somebody can use the operating system weaknesses to go and attack. In still early times, nobody even assumed that the PC will become an asset. It's, this was just used like a calculator or a compute tool. PC can store very important confidential information. If your PC is lost, your carrier is lost. So these type of things people never conceived. So because of that, security actually went into the back burner. So security was always sold as an additional thing as an, and customers did start viewing as, uh, as an additional financial burden rather than 
a real protection. So, many of the conventional operating systems and softwares were not written with security as a prime objective and that is why when you buy these operating systems, you have to go and buy another set of hard software and hardware to go and secure this operating system. So, security not part of the backbone of software development, not, back, not part of the implementations uh, inside an organization, software implementations inside an organization and the security being viewed separately from the software, security being discoupled, decoupled from the uh, operating system. These are some of the reasons why today we are in this state with respect to information security. You will also understand that security needs to grow with the design. It can't be suddenly added into a design. It should start from the day one when the design starts. So security should be embedded in it. These are some of the reasons why we still have issues in protecting our digital assets. So, and we, the, these issues get solved by having some other software which will go and ensure protection, but still it is not part of the core software. We need to accept today that the core software running in a system and the applications that uh, use a set of core data inside the system are still vulnerable to attacks and to address those vulnerabilities, we have listed seven of seven best practices. Uh, what is a practice here? Go and buy these software and install them properly. properly. Now we have seen this. Now we will see more about these best practices in this lecture in a little more detail. So antivirus everybody use. But you know Microsoft actually claims based on their internal survey uh, or the survey they have conducted that fewer than 30 percent of all users have up to date antivirus software. If you do not have up to date antivirus software, you essentially you, you have certain vulnerabilities that are not fixed and people can attack through those vulnerabilities. Most of these antivirus manufacturers have information and alert pages where you can find primers on malware, education to malware as well as alerts to most current threats. So, this is, so these are the list of several antivirus software. Some of them, the Greysoft, Alwell software and ESA are free. They are freeware. The next thing is the anti-spyware software. Uh, so, so this needs to also be installed and maintained and we need to use the software regularly and then you see a lot of things, counter spy, spy weeper, sweeper, anti-spyware, hijack this, add a very C personal, uh, search and destroy, windows defender. Some of them are also freeware. Another important thing is that we need to keep updating our operating system, like for example, update Windows and all other applications and each update will have something to do with security. If you see some of the latest updates of say Microsoft or other organization, a significant part of it is to go and fix some vulnerabilities. For the most part of updating Windows, or a Microsoft operating system, it is automated. One can just go and you need not even uh, click. It can be automated, but we can go and check whether the new patch is working properly. Similarly, for every software, there is uh, vendor specific patches and all these operating systems gives you a quick way of going and updating all these patches. Now we will see some commercially available, commercially off the shelf uh, 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 hard, uh, software that is available which can take care of this uh, problem that we have posed here. 
So the one of the thing is the security bundle, which includes antivirus, personal firewall, anti-spyware, content filtering, parental control, pop-up blockers, anti-spam capabilities, everything. But the most important thing is when you have a security bundle, each of this would require some amount of knowledge to implement it. And for an average user to use all these things would be very difficult because they may, they may lead to incorrect configurations and once you have incorrect com configuration, this will give you a false sense of security. Many, many security bundles do exist. We talk of McAfee, Symantec, Computer Associates, Trend Micro, Zone Alarm, F-Secure, Microworld, Panda Software, Softwind Bit Defender, Professional Edition, Estendia, Security Suit. So many things exist as security bundles which can be used to get the desired level of security. Now we have talked about antivirus and anti-spyware and security bundles. Now we will talk about how to protect a PC from the uh, uh, internet. So every PC can be populated with a personal firewall. So what will the personal firewall do? It will permit or deny communication based on security policy that you put on the uh, system. These type of personal firewalls would be extremely uh, useful specifically for hand devices, handheld devices as well. So you can go and Google on Air Scanner and Blue Fire. These are personal firewalls for the uh, handheld devices like your mobile phones. There are many personal firewall programs like Zone Labs, Symantec, Norton Personal Firewall, Kerio, Tiny Software's Personal Firewall, Mac OS X, Windows 7 and above. We are also living in a wireless world. Virtually all the notebooks, your iPad, iPhone, everything are wireless enabled. And you will have, and that means it assumes you have WLAN, an access point, WLAN to be available in the office. Now, having a WLAN will lead to very serious security vulnerabilities. Three of them I have list listed here. One thing is unauthorized user can enter into your system because your wireless LAN is not bounded by the cable and it is, bounded, it is unbounded by the air. And so, somebody, some attacker can basically get uh, into the access to the wireless signal from outside a building and actually connect to the network. So, that you need to protect. And attackers can also, since it's not going through a wired closed medium, the attackers can also capture and view transmitted data. And very quickly today, the employees in the office can install personal virus equipment. So in your mobile phone can become a hot uh, spot. So any, any, any uh, laptop can connect through the wireless to the mobile phone and the mobile phone will help them reach the internet through them. So that a particular office says that uh, um, though it says that wireless it has a password etc it is not easy it can actually go employees can use this wireless LAN Though you have put all perimeter security, the, since the wireless does not have a very fixed perimeter, so, so people can use these wireless capabilities to connect and defeat primary perimeter security measures. So some of the best wireless security practices when you have a wireless LAN is to go and implement MAC address filtering, turn off unnecessary services, change default SSID, change default channel, disable DHCP on access point, 
You can also use encryption, change default admin username and password, specify the number of clients that can connect to the access point. So all these things uh, are some very important best practices for wireless security. Some other other best practices when not using your PC, turn it off. Because more you expose the PC to the internet, more would be the exposure of your uh, PC to, to an untrusted environment. And you need to view your email as text only because that will disable the function that automatically views email as HTML and do not automatically open attachment. Do not run software programs of unknown origin. Delete chain emails and junk mail. Do not forward or reply to any of them. So these are all some best practices by which you can get. And very importantly, never reply to an email to unsubscribe or to remove yourself from an unknown list. This lets the spammer know that they have reached a live email address and your spam mail will increase. And back up your critical data and documents regularly. Thumb drives and CDs are actually cheap. You can do that. We now look at why are we conducting this course? We have been telling you that there is a large need for information security professionals. Now this slide basically talks of why we need information security professionals. We have been talking of implementing patches, implementing anti-spyware, anti-malware, etc. No matter how hard we try, it is not possible for a user to do this rigorously. So there is a need for information security professionals who understand the depth of the problem, the importance of this problem, and they basically come and start uh, installing this. They maintain the security within the organization. They maintain all the PCs and ensure that security, they are all secured, all the antiviruses are updated, etc. All the spyware, anti-spyware are all updated. Now, people who can appreciate information security, people who can do this meticulously, there is, it's a skill. And that skill set is what is lacking a long way in the market. There is a long, large shortage of secu information security personnel. So if you, if you become one, you actually become much more uh, relevant to current day's most important problem, namely information security. And since you become very much relevant to the most important problem today, you actually get rewarded very well for this. So there is a need for a inf skilled information security professionals and this course actually aims to motivate you to become one. Of late, even the regulatory bodies have been talking about uh, having qualified pro professionals who can ensure a, a secure operation within the organization. And even when you look at modern, uh, the many IT driven companies, their security budgets have grown. They, they recognize that there is high cost involved in associated uh, with implementing security and security is a necessary prevention and uh, so many, many organizations have started increasing the security budgets and they are looking for good information security professionals. So to sum up, <coughs> what we have done in this part of module one is that we have looked at a PC and we f went and found out what a PC can do, how a PC can become a source of um, uh, a malware, a source of nuisance to its neighbors, 
how a PC can become a nasty one in, a, uh, in, in the internet. It's a version of personal computers. So we all saw the different type of current day attacks and solutions to these current day attacks. And many of these solutions need to be uh, meticulously done. There is not big challenge, uh, there is not big uh, intellectual uh, activity involved, but the challenge is to be meticulous. And the challenge is also that the, the intellectual challenge here is to go and come out with software, actually antivirus, spyware, etc., anti spyware, etc., which can envisage what could be the attack of tomorrow and make the prevention mechanisms today. So, this actually requires more thinking. It's not uh, so, it is more artistic, it needs more imagination. I should imagine about what will happen tomorrow, what would be the possible security threats. And the imagination needs to be wild, probably very unreasonable imaginations. Daydreaming may help. So, so I just remember this, say in early, late, uh, mid 1990s, when the mobile phone came into existence, nobody ever thought that this mobile phone would be used for any other purpose other than talking. But today, you rarely talk on your mobile phone. You actually message WhatsApp and so many things. So, in some sense, the functionality of a mobile phone has now become, uh, you know, the mobile phone turned out to be uh, a, an organizer carrying some of the information, then it became almost a tablet today and almost a computer. People can actually uh, you know, install a, 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 a shell and start even doing C programming on their mobile. The, their processors are capable of doing this. So the functionality, this is a wild imagination. A person in 1995, he had imagined that a mobile phone can be used for all these things. It would have essentially been a very, very wild imagination in 1995 or 96 when this mobile technology started uh, coming into place. Similarly, today we need people, the information security professionals, who have understood the entire system today and now go and see what would happen to these systems from a security point of view 10 to 20 years later. And that will be. Uh, a very, very interesting exercise. And that, and you start making preventive measures for those type of vulnerabilities that could come uh, years after would be a very big value addition. So the role and need for an information security professional is going to go, grow on the high, higher side in the next even one or two decades. So, so take this course very seriously and try to become an information security professional to have a great career and a good service to mankind. We will now see in the next session about cloud computing. Thank you.